Uh, like I said, practice every day. Welcome to day three, which is four days after day two. Pretend everything's normal. We're gonna play some jazz blues today to get warmed up. Basically what that means is I'm gonna start playing the blues and then slowly throw in some jazz that I've been learning. Let's get right off to it. jazz I've ever played. Let's keep going. played in like four days. Okay, so what I'm going to do since I realize there's a couple blind spots, wow, it's pretty in tune. So that's just my playing is bad. So B flat to E flat, the, the idea is do the chromatic, um, you know, I've got the scale. So I've got these arpeggios, B flat seven. I've also got D half diminished. You can use that in there. So like, sounds great, right? even resolve right it sounds great for example if we're going from b flat 
to E flat like a resolve, like a 5 1, we can go, uh, right? It's got a nice sound. Uh, in this case, we're going B flat to E flat 7. So we've got, and, and let's finish these arpeggios B flat 7, D half diminished. We've got the 5 of a dominant 7 chord is always a minor 7. And then it resolves to that. It's a very cliche sound in jazz, but if you're going to learn jazz, you should learn the cliches. Right? And I did them a few times. I'm not afraid of sounding new beginner ish. I'd rather sound that than a guy that plays this. You know, tries to be fancy about it. It's like, that's just, I don't like playing outside. I like playing inside. I like playing inside the family of dominance, as Barry calls it. So we'll get there. We got this, we've got this, and we've got this. And of course, there's one more. You pick the seventh scale degree, uh, which is this A flat, and you play a major seventh four note chord. Okay? So let's find in the recording, let's find a B flat. In fact, I bet you I can find just a B flat seven backing track. Just something to vamp on the chords. If, there we go, right away I found one. So here's a B flat seven that we're gonna play over and I'm gonna show you those four arpeggios. That's the first one. I'm doing them as triplets, let's just do. That's outlining the chord, pretty basic. That's this one I was playing. In fact, that's like what the bass is doing. <laughs> and then the next one we can do is... Now it sounds like we're harmonizing the bass. What was the next one? That's right, the minor 7. Okay, and the last one is that A flat major 7. These are all extensions of a B flat 7. So let's use them in jazz now, ready? side as I want to get, right? That was great. I think I did it in A on accident. As you guys know, guitar players like A. We don't like B flat, but as a jazz player, you like B flat. So guitar, jazz, I like both keys. So if we're doing that, just like that. All thirds. It's kind of a fun exercise. I probably wouldn't play it like that in a song. I like to just do triplets like. Uh, and I like to do what's called pivoting on the last note. Uh, you take your first note and then the second note you go down an octave. Oops. So instead of it's so let's do it on off you one, two, one, two, three, four, one, and right. That's a nice sound. It's a great sound. So let's do it with all of them. So we got the first one. And then the next one would be uh Ooh, that's a great one. So one, two, three, four. Mm. Wait. Great, right? Pretty cliche inside the box, nothing too crazy. Um, all right, so with that in mind, we're going to go over to the Yardbird Suite here, and I'm going to play along to the Yardbird Suite. And that's a Charlie Parker tune. One. And it goes two, like this. One, two, three, four. <laughs>
Okay, so the chords. Ooh, we got too many tracks going at once. Okay, so you can hear that the chords, in fact, let's do this. In fact, the chords are of a C major, and then it goes B flat seven to A flat seven. Or sorry, B flat seven to A seven. And then the next chord is a D minor, and then a G. Okay, so check this out. So it's C major. We can play a C major arpeggio. Like I said before, with the dominant, the major ones are this. Major seven, third, go to the third of the chord, minor seven. Go to the fifth of the chord, dominant seven. And then that one's a lot easier. You can do half diminished or fully diminished on the seventh scale degree. That one's a little easier because you know your major scale. Uh, thinking of it as dominant is the way Barry Harris does it. So um, we're going to just play C. We're going to just briefly do something with C. like, But we're going to focus on the dominant chord. So we're going to go. So it's. Oh, this one says different chords. F minor 7 to B flat 7 instead of B flat 7. Oh. Oh, that could be fine. Oh, but okay, so it is. It's C, and then just to the key of B flat. You know, B flat seven. We'll call it. So we got the major. There we go. One, two, three, four. So there's something called going from B flat seven to C major. I forget what it's called. You jazz guys out there know the name of it, but in Barry Harris thinks of it as just playing with the family. So it's B flat seven is essentially a G seven. So if someone plays B flat seven to C, you can just do the regular, you know, let's try, just pretend we're in G. Oh, that's not G. So like, and now we're in G or C. Um, or you can follow it to a T. Right, you could do something like that. So, here's the melody. Right? So you can tell it's major. And then right here we go into B flat 7. And then up to the D, uh, up to the 5th of C. And then it does the cool, when I, I kind of like go like this, right? Because that A7 in the key of C means a D minor is coming. So you can kind of think of it as D uh, harmonic minor. Check this out. This is one of the coolest things I've learned, and you hear it all over the place in jazz music or Nintendo music, as I like to hear it. <laughs> Nintendo is the new jazz music. Okay, check this out. Start it over so you can hear where I'm talking about. One. Two, one, two, three, four. C, B flat, here it comes. C. Right? That was an obvious example. Here, let's do it again. Now we're in E minor. The bridge is cool. The bridge I love. So we finished the A section, which is basically Right? And then Oh no, that's not right. Wait, is it? Oh. And then where do we go after A7? To D minor. A lot of D7s and D minor, like a lot of stuff going on. In this chord chart I'm looking at is way gnarlier than any other one. But let's just take the chords separately and go through the arpeggios. So our first one is C major. We did that before. Great. 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 That's great. And then we go to 
F minor seven to B flat seven, or as Barry Harris says, just think B flat seven the whole time. And back to C. All right, and it's hard to make music out of that. Let's see. Actually, yeah, that's what we'll do is take them, make them shorter. Because you got four note chords, we can also use the triad in there. Right, you can use an E minor triad over a C major seven. It's not that crazy. Uh, let's go to what I was just going to do here. So it's. So that's kind of a way. C. We're doing the. Um, B half diminished. That kind of resolves to the. So. Let's do something more natural. And then we could hit that. Pivot. Nope. And then we can resolve to a C like that. Uh, let's see. See if we resolve to E flat, that would be great. Actually, it does work. That's the fifth of C. That's why B flat seven can go into C because the third of E flat, which is the normal one chord, is the fifth of the C. So let's try that then. Let's go. Uh, yeah, dude. So with the chords, it'd be. Not bad, right, because C minor. So anytime you use a relative minor, like for example, B flat could go to E. Well, that means it could B flat could also go to C minor, right? That's popular music 101 right there. Right? Um, what about going from B flat to C major, right? That's kind of like that's the whole deal here. Oh, the back door seven. The back door dominant. That's what it's called. The back door dominant. So if you want to get, if you see B flat seven to C, it's not that crazy. Just think B flat seven to E flat. The only notes that won't work. Uh, well, that would work. Holy crap. Let's just do these. Let's see which ones work and which ones don't. I'm just going to start right on the top. Where you at, song? Uh, thanks, you guys, for watching. This has been fun, fun journey so far, and it's very early in our practice vlogs, but it's been really fun. Keeping me honest, y'all, or at least trying. One, two, uh, one, two, one. Oh, so that didn't work, but that wouldn't have worked in E flat either. I messed up, but I was hitting the pocket. Two, one, two, three, four. I kind of botched it there, but it sounds great. How do I... Oh, like that. Oh. Actually, instead of... That's a little hokey. That's a little hokey. It's supposed to be... Jazz is hard to play. Try that one though. That may, yeah. Let's try this. Here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. Okay, 
so I just tried to follow it pretty sim simple. Um, learning the scales, learning the chords, and then once you learn them really good, then you got to break them in half. That's what I find, to turn them into phrases, because it just doesn't sound that cool, but if I went, it could have been better, or, or, or. Hmm. Yeah, a lot of stuff there. Okay, so what I want to do before we call it a day is uh, do some blues, some actual blues. Just to call it a day. Straight blues in A. I don't know if I like straight blues though. I don't hate it. this like when I hit it double you don't have to play it in time and it works over every chord but if I put a blues in there let's play it I still like the double tap at the end same thing in the same spot on the same strings but an octave up. Oh, it sounds like glass up here. Guitar plays nice up here, dude.
right, y'all. Thanks so much for joining me on day three of the November journey. Let's see how many days in a row we can practice and we log everything. So we did a lot of technical practice one day. And then we did a lot of um, harmonic minor the next day. And then we did some actual songs today. And uh, the next day will be more songs. Hopefully. I don't know. We're going to look at this at the end of the month and see how we can update our practice schedule every month. So I can have goals every month. Like this month, I want to get Yardbird Suite down. Not just improvising over the chords, but, you know, that actual melody right there to be good. be that that's it to mimic the horn too anyway so that's what we're doing right now we're, in, we're working on dominant seven chords everything was in in the scale today we didn't do any do, uh six diminished stuff that was crazy i went in different keys there so we got you can hear how they all connect it's basically what your hand wants to do when you're doing uh, diatonic chords. You know that. Ba -da 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 -da. Anytime you're trying to play in the key and you mess up and you put a whole step in a place where the whole step doesn't go, it's like, well, the family of diminished is kind of like doing that. Family of dominant sevens is kind of like doing that. Look up Barry Harris. Look up things I look from Barry Harris. This is more of a plat practice vlog and less of a lesson. Obviously, today I'm all over the place, but uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow.